10,685 pounds. A big ol' four slide paradise point coming in on trade here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. There's an above average chance you've never heard of this brand. This is a uh, Crossroads product. This is kind of what came before a lot of their uh, more current upper end fifth wheels effectively, like, uh, like a Cameo or something like that, for instance. This was their big daddy fifth wheel for a long time. They just weren't a large company at the time they were producing these, and you probably never heard of it. That being said, it was actually always a brand for which I had a lot of respect. They did a lot of good things in a lot of good places. This one has, uh, the decals are weathered, for sure. It's spent its time part kept, which is good, meaning the structure's not all worn out, but the decals have seen quite a bit of sunshine. They are most definitely sun-kissed. However, other than that, it's actually pretty decent shape. Um, we uh, actually dispatched a driver to collect this, so if you know, you've know you got like a destination site, you don't have a tow vehicle, but you'd like something to park there, give us a call. Obviously, we can just park it on your site just like we picked it up from theirs. This is a classic rear den, uh, which that might not mean anything to you, but to someone who's been around this business or been around camping for a long time, it means that this is the kind of RV that you're not really towing a lot. It's an RV that you get there, you set up, and you can kind of live in the thing long term. But, surprisingly, you can actually pretty much access everything in this RV with the slides closed. You can get back there to the rear living room if you really needed to, and obviously, as you saw, you can get to everything here in the kitchen when you're traveling down the road, including the refrigerator. You really don't lose anything when you're traveling, which is kind of surprising on a big, big old rig like this. And what's really cool about floor plans like this is how they give you very clear definition of rooms. Like, you don't have a kitchen living sort of great room, as you would refer to it more in uh, household terms. Instead, you've got like a dedicated, we're obviously in the kitchen, you know? A lot of homes, when you first enter a home, you enter in the kitchen. You have a dedicated private rear living space. And one of the cool things about that is if you choose to use this back here, something like an office or a guest room, if you have some guests over, there's just, you know, there's a hard door that closes off and closes this area, makes it completely separate. And all of those day-night shades on all these windows will also help give you that sense of privacy you want if you have a guest over. Now, overall, I mean, it's, it's an RV that's definitely seen some use, but, man, it wasn't hard use. It was not abuse. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. What I see here, it looks to have, you know, stood the test of time pretty well. When you close these back slides, obviously you will want to uh, rotate those chairs. It looks like we've got one original factory chair and then one residential recliner upgrade. But man, did they do a spot on job of matching those fabrics. Like, if uh, the fabrics match so closely, if I haven't had noticed that the back of the seats look a little bit different, I don't know that I'd have picked that up. So this over here could function as a hide bed that does appear to be more of a, what, is, what style is this? Is this an air bed? No, that's a traditional uh, inner spring hide bed Okay, so that could pop open. You could have some grandkids, some adult guests, some whatever work out for you. Potentially, uh, I could see this working out for couples where one or the other of you has like sleep apnea and due to storing issues, you just can't hang out together in the same bedroom if you want to stay married. Sometimes that is kind of a thing that people work out. And I, when I call it a rear den, this is a very true, like purist rear den because it does have this kind of private office back here. Something that has made a lot of middle bunk or bonus rooms very popular is their ability to have that office space for work camping. And rear dens is really where a lot of that started. Now you've got this big closet right there, right when you walk in the door. And when I opened it, that <laughs> that broom handle fell down at me right there. And I felt really bad for a minute because I saw the red and the white on a stick like that. And the first thing that my mind went to was like, oh my gosh, that's somebody's little stick for like, uh, if they have visual impairments, that's their, their way to be able to tip tap around and, and not run into things. And then I realized it was just a red and white broom handle and I'm an idiot. <laughs> 10 cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer. On that note, we're going to segue into a 10 cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer. And then they put these little basket shelf organizers in here. But obviously, I mean, you could, you know, pack this thing up, use it however you want. 
And I do believe this is intended to be a potential washer dryer closet. Classic fifth wheels like this tended to put that not in the main bedroom closet as they do today. And I think that's why we've got these big household outlets right there as well. Now this does have a uh, classic split bath design, meaning we've got a sliding pocket privacy door here. There is a sliding accordion privacy uh, wall right here so that if you do have guests back in that rear den you can make sure that you know when they come up to use the bathroom they're not staring at you sleeping which is obviously pretty creepy this is a 60 by 80 residential queen it's very CPAP friendly in its current situation with these pretty healthy sized side stands on both sides of the bed and you'll see power outlets right next to them however if you wanted to you could remove these side stands and you could make this king bed capable so it's a queen right now it's king capable this was also built with a factory installed second air conditioner and i can tell it's factory installed because it's actually dual ducted when that was when this thing was first built that was a rare find a lot of factory second air conditioners were actually just a drop in ac so that again is one of those uh, indicators that this was something a little more higher end at the time it was built one of the only things that really kind of differentiates it from a more modern RV is, frankly, just this split bathroom design. And that's just kind of the way that things had to be built, because this RV was already long enough that uh, the split bath helped. It actually shaves two and a half feet off versus a private bath design. And uh, a lot of times when I look into smaller closet bathrooms like this, on an older RV, I'll find where the linoleum flooring had cold cracked or curled. And I don't see any of that here. By and large, this thing looks to have been very well maintained. Now, the split bath does something for us, though, that a lot of modern RVs can't match. And that is this big, wide-open floor space up here in the bed-bath area. So that if you want to actually be able to stand up, change your clothes, get dressed, you can do that here. And notice that not only do we have that full front wall closet, we also have this big extra closet contained within the slide-out right there plus a couple dresser drawers below, and right in front of that, you've got the uh, uh, the booby trap hatch, <laughs> which is actually a, uh, a little flap. You can lift that up. It's like a, a trap door to, that you could put a laundry basket below it and make it like a laundry chute. A little addendum here inside before we hop outside. I noticed as I got up on the roof um, that there was a very small soft spot right next to that ladder. And obviously, uh, you'll see me get up on the roof in just a minute. I had no problem navigating anything. But it made me start to look, and it does appear that there might have been... Well, not might have. There was definitely a very minor, very small, brief period of water penetration up in that corner. However, looking at it up on the roof, it looks to be historic, because they have sealed the ever-loving dickens out of that. So my guess is, as soon as they spotted it, they did something about it. So just for a reference point, by the way, that is above one of the uh, recliners on the campsite here, back in the rear den area, corresponding to uh, right next to where the ladder is mounted. I have a feeling I, it was either a rear termination strip or the ladder mount itself uh, had a little seam failure. But again, it definitely looks like they've done a lot of resealing up there. It doesn't look like it's a problem now. And I was able to get up and down the ladder quite a bit. I had to go way out of my way to locate this. This is the kind of thing that you're not going to notice when you're camping, but it is the kind of thing that you deserve to know about before you go spending a lot of money. We don't hide things from you at Halet RV. If I see something, I will say something. The basement in this thing is just, God, it's monstrous. This side-to-side -side pass through storage, and you see it passes all the way up front. And I left that little compartment door open there so you could see the central vacuum collection point. But I like that it's inside that door. That's a nice little touch you don't usually see done for manufacturers even today. It kind of just cleans up that pass-through storage. If you're outside enjoying your campsite, you know, and you open that baggage door, maybe it's, maybe it's just a matter of personal pride, but you don't feel like somebody's looking at your dirt in a sense, you know? Pardon the brevity, you might notice those clouds coming in. I'm actually dodging raindrops right now. It is threatening to cut loose here. Um, Slide awning covers have done a magnificent job of protecting this thing, keeping the extra weather from cooking the tops of those slides, which reduces maintenance, and it also will help keep the RV cooler. This does have a heated enclosed belly. Um, you know what? I need to get up close and look at those tires, because it occurs to me I haven't done that yet. Windows are all very heavily tinted. 
to the degree that I think that might be aftermarket tin, but uh, if not, I mean, if it is, they did a clean job of it. I don't remember this brand having heavy tint on windows like that, but man, I could be wrong. I don't know. I like how the roof line actually wraps over the sidewall, and it takes that, uh, that termination strip where the sidewall meets the roof, and it moves it from an area of high stress to low stress. So let's take an up close and personal look at those tires, then we'll jump on the roof real quick before the lightning gets here. These tires look virtually new, um, which kind of surprises me for something that sat most of its time at a destination. These are somewhat recent tires. They're not aged out. There's no weathering on them. Barely any use on the tread. That's fantastic. The roof looks about like I expected it to, and by that I mean usually part-kept RVs, um, if they're under a tree or something, they just tend to collect a little more grime, basically. It can be washed off, but a, uh, a wash and conditioning up here, I think, would definitely be in order. However, if you look, you can see how you see touch-up seals, you can see replacement seals on this stuff. It was actively maintained on a seasonal basis. They just weren't up here every other weekend with a scrub brush working her down, you know? Now, the uh, roof of this, strangely, Crossroads never did a whole lot of vaulting on the roofing, but there's not a flat spot on this roof. Like, this is a linear roof uh, plane. However, everything is either tilted forward or tilted backward, so it always has rain runoff. It's just not a side-to-side -side vault, as you see more traditionally in RVs today. Obviously, above the uh, bathroom vent there, they've got that max air vent fan. And as we spin around, you can see you've got that front bedroom air and the rear uh, living room air back here, giving us an air conditioner on each end of the RV means you always get good even cooling throughout the entire RV. It also means you don't have a compressor directly above you in your kitchen uh, sort of dining area. So if you are sitting there visiting with friends, just a little easier to chit chat. So pardon me, I'm going to, well, I, I was gonna say hop off the roof, not hop off the roof. I'm going to climb down that ladder and get off this roof before that big old gray cloud uh, lands on us. But the good news, you can probably watch this and enjoy it from the comfort of your home where you're not dealing with the wind up here like I am and if it looks good give us a call we'll schedule time you get to see it in person and if it looks good then let's let's get you put together on this thing let's get you home so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone